All right, what's going on, guys? You already know what time it is. It is that time. Say it with me if you could. It is MCAT. Quick question. One drive, a thousand percent, hundred, three thousand one accelerator time. Magic. All right, so for this one, guys, what you're going to do is just answer these MCAT discrete questions, and we're going to see how many you get right, how many you get wrong. It's that simple, okay? This is from the TPR. So these questions are known to be harder than your regular AMCFL. So they are great practice. Great practice. All right. So this is the first question. Pick your answer or write it down. Question 27 here. Okay. You got some organic chem. Lovely. 28. Pick your answer. Write it down. 29. Pick your answer. Write it down. 30. Pick your answer. Write it down. And that is it. Okay. So hopefully you guys get them all right. Let's see how you guys did. Remember, this is live. Okay, look at my, it's live. There's no edits here. Okay, so this is me actually taking on these questions for the first time. I haven't seen these questions before. 27. The strength of the bond between Lewis acid and Lewis base pairs is a function of the strength of their acidity and basicity. Respectively, the BN bond in compound one below will be the strongest when what is true about X and Y. Okay, so we have a BN bond here. And if I want to make this strong, I want to make one very electronegative and the other one not, okay? Or in terms of Lewis acid and Lewis base, okay? I want to make one very Lewis base and one very Lewis acid, okay? Don't get confused and think acidity like um, like your Bronsted acid and Bronsted bases, okay? This is talking about Lewis acid and Lewis base. So one of them, basis, one of them very Lewis base, very electronegative, and the other one, very Lewis acid, the one, the low electronegative, can't talk today. All right, so how do we do this? Which one is going to be the one that's the more electronegative? How do we know? Well, you look at the periodic table, all right, we got nitrogen and boron. Nitrogen is going to be a very electronegative, and boron, we're going to make it the most electropositive we could. It's that simple. All right, so this is what we have. We have a nitrogen, then we have a boron. My goal is to make this nitrogen as partially electronegative as possible and make this boron partially positive as possible. So what groups do we add to do that? Okay. We're going to add this R2 group to this nitrogen. Okay. We wouldn't add the fluorines and bromines because it would cancel out the electro uh, negativity. All right. So I'm going to screenshot this to show you guys because I know everyone's a visual learner here. Okay. Think about it. All right. Let's see. They're telling us that we have these three X's on each side. All right. So if we had this and we had, let's say that benzene ring. Okay. And we had, let's say the fluorine, fluorine, what else? Fluorine over here. And we had the same thing on this side. Okay. Benzene ring. Don't mind how it looks. All right. I want you guys just to get the point here. And we have the same thing over here. Let's put quotations here. Okay. This is electronegative. All right. This is electronegative. 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 And they're more electronegative than nitrogen. So you're going to have very high electronegativity here. All right. They're not going to cancel each other out. These will kind of cancel each other out. But you have nitrogen and a fluorine here. And due to the induction effect, this is more electronegative than nitrogen. So you're gonna make you're gonna make the nitrogen slightly electropositive from that. Slightly. Okay, there is a whole benzene ring in the way. However, there's gonna be a slight electropositive here from that fluorine all the way over here. Alright, let's look at it here. I won't scribble and make it a little complicated, okay? You have electronegative, electronegative, electronegative. Okay. Then you have this benzene ring here. Electronegative is pulling electron density this way. It's pulling electron density this way. If this is more electronegative than nitrogen, it's going to give it a slight electropositive, slightly. And we don't want that slight there. We don't. We don't want it. We want that nitrogen to be as much as, much as electronegative as possible. Okay? So if we add those um, regular methyl groups here, okay, let's say. So I'm going to draw it over here. It's a little easier. So if we have this and then you have benzene ring, okay, some methyl groups here, okay, and you have this and some benzene ring, 
yada yada methyl groups and then quotations because it's the same thing here we don't have that electronegative element we do have this electro um, electron delocalization of the benzene ring here and we do have these methyl groups that kind of stabilize it these methyl groups are electron donating groups okay they're electron donating groups this benzene ring here you can kind of classify as an electron withdrawing group slightly very slightly okay it was an electron withdrawing group however this nitrogen is way more electronegative so it's going to keep that electronegative charge on this okay does that make sense plus these methyl groups they can kind of cancel out this electro withdrawing group and this electron donating group here this can make this electro positive and this electro negative but it's very slight okay we don't have a huge crazy electronegative atom in there like a bromine or fluorine we have this nitrogen here which is definitely more electronegative than all this making this electronegative still okay so we want those methyl groups we don't want those bromine or fluorine all right so we want r2 over here for the x's so anything that doesn't have r2x uh, yeah just like that all right and if you want we do the opposite thing for the bromine here so if you want an electropositive the bromine over here we would want to add those very high electronegative groups to it all right would we want to add fluorine or bromine we want to add the one that's more electronegative in this case oh it would be the fluorine okay so it'd be r2 and r1 r2 r1 answer is b that's how you do it guys let me know if you got that one right that was a great question in a culture of mammalian skeletal muscle cells the consumption of oxygen and glucose is measured which of the following would occur in response to inhibition of electron transport okay let's see let's see let us see well if we are inhibiting electron transport we are inhibiting aerobic respiration so we wouldn't need oxygen okay so oxygen consumption will decrease and if we're inhibiting aerobic we're going to want to up the anaerobic because how would we get energy nonetheless and we would get it by increasing glucose consumption simple all right a genetic regulator is found to contain a lysine that is important for its binding to DNA. If a missense mutation were to occur to this lysine residue, which of the following resulting amino acids would likely be the least harmful to its ability to bind DNA? Okay, missense, you should know. You should know missense, nonsense. You should know those frame shift mutations. If we want it to be the least harmful, we would want it to have the same properties as lysine. Okay. So we want it to be a basic amino acid. The only basic one here I see is arginine. So 29 is A. That's simple. Let's keep going. If size exclusion chromatography were used to separate a mixture of ethylene glycol oligomers, as shown below, with fractions further purified by gas chromatography, what might be expected? All right, size exclusion chromatography. This is when you let the big guys go first. Okay, so... You have like a, a gel matrix here. All right, I want to call it a matrix gel. I don't know what it's called, but basically you have something stopping the proteins from falling down. All right, and the big guys will fall down. Bam, they're so heavy. The small guys would get trapped up here. Okay, this is due to size. Um, it's not due to nonpolar solvents. Solvents don't matter. Oligomers with long retention times on the SEC column would mean they're smaller. And oligomers with short retention times means that these oligomers are bigger. So the small ones, they said, will have a long GC retention. And the big ones will have a long GC retention. Which one's going to have a longer GC retention? A big molecule or a small molecule? Let's think here. Hmm. GC is gas chromatography. And gas chromatography, the polar stick together with the polar stationary phase, and the mobile phase will carry the nonpolar, and that will 
go through the gas chromatography faster. So the nonpolar, this is my interpretation, the nonpolar ones would have a low retention time. And the nonpolar ones, are they the big or small? Um, this is a small one here. This is a rather big one. This is one, two. This is one, two. Mm, if you break this. Mm, I don't like this question. They could have given us more information about gas chromatography, about what they use as the stationary alluent. And if they put it, if they connect it to a mass spectrometer, they have to tell us that. All right. I'm going to assume that they connect it to a mass spectrometer. And if they are connecting it to a mass spectrometer, that would mean that the short, the long retention times, the smaller molecules will be vaporized quicker. Okay. Yeah. This would mean that the ones with the long retention time, the smaller oligomers will have will have short GC retention times. So therefore, D is correct because if it's short, it's big and it will take a long time to vaporize when that GC is connected to a mass spec. So the answer for 30 is D. Mm, don't like that question. Don't worry if you got that one wrong. They should have, they could have made that question better. But yeah, guys, how you do it? Let's see if we got them all right. Okay. So 27 is B, 28 is D, B, D, A, D, B, D, A, D, B, D, A, D, B, D, A, D. There you go, guys. That's how you do it. Let me know what you guys think. If you're interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me, go ahead and join MCAT University, guys. It is the ultimate package designed to guarantee for you to hit your target score and also hit your target score in half the time. All right. So join FK University, guys. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in the next video.